It was impossible to figure out what the heck my body was doing, but there was always a problem. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Samantha, if you don't know. I recently stopped my targeted therapy medication in October, but I had been on it for two years before that, so I wanted to make this video because I have been promising it. Um, all the side effects and everything of my targeted therapy. The one that I was on was Ribocyclib. Kiskali, I think, is the brand name that I had, but I, I don't know if there are others. <laughs> Hopefully you found this video if you're thinking about starting Ribocyclib and you want to know what it's like or if you just, you know, want to know what I've been dealing with over the past two years. <laughs> now, I am not going to be the best person to explain this, just putting that out there, but targeted therapy is not the same thing as chemotherapy, though they do have a lot of the same side effects. <laughs> Chemo usually goes in and attacks rapidly dividing cells, so that's why your hair falls out, I think, when you get chemo because those cells are growing very quickly. Targeted therapy is different because it's looking for something specific that cancer cells have, and it's um, trying to block that stuff from happening. So in general, it's less aggressive than chemotherapy. And I agree with that. If you don't know, I would take three pills a day for three weeks, and then I would have one week off where I wouldn't take anything and then I would start back up again. This was because it's too hard on your body to keep doing it. There's a number of side effects which I'll get into and it also um, lowers your white blood count. Ribocyclob really only works effectively with an aromatase inhibitor. I was taking letrozole for this which is just a medication that lowered some of the hormones that my cancer was targeting or my cancer was using to grow. I started taking it because there was new research out that showed this helped premenopausal women. Increased survival chances for people with my type of cancer that is ER, PR, positive, breast cancer. So taking this helps a lot of people who have stage four breast cancer. I'm not gonna try to go into the science more because I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so you should ask your doctor. You can research all this stuff yourself. I am here to tell you about my experience on this medication. So I took this along with letrozole, like I already said, but there are other medications you can take along with it, um, other aromatase inhibitors. What is Gray texting me? <laughs> uh, that'll take too long to explain. Okay, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, I was taking, so, I was taking this medicine along with letrozole, like I already said, but I was also getting Zoldex injections every month. My periods did come back after chemo, which was good, but I needed to stop them again, so I took Zoldex to shut down my ovaries. Yeah, fun stuff. Had to go back to the doctor's office every 28 days to get that injection. So letrozole, Zoldex can cause a lot of side effects just on their own and I have another video about my hormone therapy side effects. I tried to differentiate between the side effects but like I said, I've been taking them at the same time. Not completely though because I did start taking the letrozole and Zoldex slightly before I started the ribocyclib and during my honeymoon slash wedding period, the month of that, I stopped taking my ribocyclib completely because I wanted a break from it and all of its side effects. There's some side effects that are shared between all of the medications, but definitely the ribocyclib made things a lot worse. The side effects that I would get from my targeted therapy would usually start right away. So like, I mean right away. I mean like 15 minutes after I took my ribocyclib, I would start to feel nauseous. The first time I started taking ribocyclib, I had a lot of bowel problems. I would have a lot of diarrhea. <laughs> Too much information. This is what caused my fissure. I would go to work and I would have to like go out to the bathroom all the time and it's super annoying because the bathroom, you have to like, I don't wanna explain it, but you have to get out of the area that you're working in to get to the bathroom and it's super annoying. But anyway, I'd have to do this like all the time because I had so many side effects. That got a lot better, but it didn't get better quick enough because I started developing like hemorrhoids and then the fissure. So that was super awful. I guess I just got used to the medication, but it definitely was still causing issues because then I would just start to alternate between diarrhea and constipation, which was so much worse because you didn't know what medication to take. You couldn't take a medicine to make you not have diarrhea if you were gonna be constipated. So it was like so annoying and it was impossible to figure out 
what the heck my body was doing, but there was always a problem. <laughs> it definitely made me more sensitive to certain foods. Like whenever I would have a milkshake, I would just be done for the rest of the day. Like I was so sick. And so when the peppermint milkshakes would come out at Chick-fil-A around Christmas time, I really had a big decision to make because those are so good. Do I drink one of them and then know that later I have to take my medicine and it's going to make me want to throw up? I did do it a lot of the time, okay? Like, how do you resist a peppermint milkshake from chocolate, chocolate chip? A peppermint chocolate chip milkshake from Chick-fil-A. How? How do you resist that? They're so good. I guess I already mentioned this, but one of the biggest side effects was nausea. They recommend you take this medicine in the morning, but it was so hard for me to do that because it would be so hard for me to wake up in the morning and be like, I need to take medicine that's gonna make me feel sick all day. How do you get out of bed knowing that? Knowing that you have to go take this stuff that's just gonna make you feel awful. So I changed it to start taking my medication at night. That helped me with like the mental side of it, but also, I would sleep through the worst of the nausea usually. And the problem with nausea medications, because I did have some and I tried very many, but a side effect of a lot of them is that they just make you so tired. And they made me so tired. My oncologist would keep moving me up to stronger stuff because he, he just wanted to help me because I, I had so much nausea. And you know, the strongest medication I'm on like to his credit, it didn't make me nauseous at all. It worked, but I slept the entire day. So that wasn't feasible. So I ended up just sticking with Compazine, which was a nausea medication that I had already used for IV chemo and worked pretty well, except for the fact that it made me really tired. But of course I got used to it and I was taking the medication at night so I could take a Compazine fall asleep and that would be that. Sometimes if I was so tired, I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna take the ribocyclin and I'm gonna fall asleep. And if you know that you're just gonna get in bed and fall asleep, that was usually a good plan. But if for some reason you stay up for some reason, usually because of hot flashes, which was a side effect of my hormone therapy, you're gonna feel awful because the nausea is gonna hit you within 15 minutes. And if I ate dinner too soon to when I took the medicine, it made things a million times worse. So it was kind of like super annoying because like I didn't have any flexibility if I actually wanted to feel okay. I had to like schedule my meals. Other really bad side effect. These are my top two worst side effects. Nausea, fatigue is the second one. I was so tired all the time. At the beginning, when I first started taking my medicine, I would start to feel the fatigue right away. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I feel this huge difference. And then it would be time for me to stop taking the medicine. 24 hours after that, I would get energy again and I would have energy for the, like basically the whole week that I had off. Eventually, like uh, six months, a year into taking the medicine, that stopped happening and I just felt fatigued all the time. I didn't have a like, oh, I feel better now until like the day of or the day before I had to start taking my medicine again, which was one of the reasons that I obviously stopped taking it because it was just so hard on me. But at one point my oncologist was like, is your fatigue getting better? And I'm like, I don't think it's getting better. I think I'm just getting more used to it. And I just looked at him and I was just like, I, I don't even know anymore. I don't know if I'm fatigued. I don't remember what it would feel like. I don't know what I felt like before any of this because it was so, long, so long of just feeling so bad. And now that I'm off the medicine, I know, I know I felt bad and like that was valid, you know, I wasn't just being crazy. Like, and I did start to feel crazy for a little second because I was just like, I don't know if I feel bad or if I'm just like getting used to just feeling sick every single day of my life, you know? So I can't tell you how happy I am to be off of it, but I already made that video. So this one, I'm talking about the side effects. <laughs> Also disclaimer, some people do not have this many side effects. They don't have these problems at all. So if you're watching this because you're trying to decide if you want to do it, I don't think that there's any harm in trying it. And I would say, give it a fair chance. Um, you maybe don't have to do it for two years if you're still feeling awful for after two years, but the side effects for me at least did get better after three to four months. So. Maybe just give that a try, I guess, and see how you're doing. Another side effect was I had eye issues, and I'm not quite sure if this was the hormone therapy or the ribocyclib, but I think probably the ribocyclib, 
basically my eyes were red all the time. Like it looked like I cried every single day, which like, you know, I did cry sometimes because this was awful, but I didn't cry every single day. <laughs> I would just like get really, really red puffy eyes and I'd have to like clean out my eyelids every single day. It would sometimes get so bad that it like looked like I had a black eye basically. Like it was just like completely red swollen. Like it also made my eyes super dry and sensitive to light, which like I'm not even sure if that's from this or if it's like a leftover permanent side effect from chemo because I had all of those problems with chemo. They were a lot worse then, but yeah. Another side effect is like depression or decreased mood. This was a side effect that a lot of people reached out to me and told me that they had on hormone therapy. But I think for me at least, this was definitely like heightened by uh, the ribocyclob just because like the rib ribocyclob caused so many more side effects. So obviously like, how do you go to bed at night when you know you have to like go take a bunch of medicine that's gonna make you feel sick? I would just sit on the couch until 4 a.m. because I was like, I don't wanna go take this. I know that if I go to sleep, I have to take this. So I don't know. And, and it would, especially like on the day that I would go back on my medicine, I would start to feel better. And sometimes I wouldn't even realize that it was the day I was supposed to go back on the medicine. And that would just make me super sad whenever I would realize, oh, it's Wednesday. Cause I guess at the end, I started out doing it on Monday, but then I got sick. So I just stopped taking the medicine and things would happen. So eventually ended up, I was taking it on Wednesdays, I guess. But anyway, it would be Wednesday and I would be like, I, I am very sad because it's Wednesday and I have to go take this again. And uh, at the beginning, it's just so hard because you're just like, I have to do this for three weeks. And like whenever I would get to like the one week mark, I would start to feel a little bit better and I'd be like, all right, I can make it like only one week left. That last week, a lot of the time was like the hardest week, but still it was a little bit better knowing that you only had a week left, I guess. It's hard when you only have one off week, when you're just like, I have to do this for 75% of the time. So yeah. <laughs> and especially because like the off week didn't even really do much for me anymore at that point. Like I said, it lowers your white blood cells. Um, so that just, I think causes fatigue on its own and makes you immunocompromised, you know, so that helped me get my COVID vaccine earlier, I guess. I guess that was a bonus, but didn't really enjoy having lower white blood cells. Um, another side effect was hair loss. And again, I'm not sure if this is the hormone therapy or the ribocyclib. My eyebrows basically had just grown in after chemo. And I was like, okay, like cool. And then I started taking the ribocyclib and it started like, falling out, thinning a lot more. Now they're back kind of, not completely. They look a lot better now, which a lot of you guys have already told me that I look a lot better. It might've been part of the reason why my I kept having eye problems was because I didn't really have like eyelashes or because like my eyelashes were growing in like really straight, kind of like poking me in the eye, which was super annoying. As I stayed on the medicine, my eyebrows got thinner and thinner. And then I think it reached a point where it was like, all right, this is where we're gonna stay. But yeah, that was a side effect. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of me complaining to the camera about all of my side effects on my medication. It's always a pleasure whenever I get to do that. If you're new, feel free to subscribe or check out some other videos before you decide if you want to subscribe or, you know, just, you know, click off this video because you hate me. It's fine. I get it. Um, yeah, that's all. Bye. <laughs>